Okay, so welcome back and today we're going to be looking at how to set this up for yourself Say if you want to play LAN with your friends um, You can use the same lessons in here to set up a public server But there are a few more additional steps which will be covered in a subsequent video So this is mainly aimed at people who just want to play with their friends on a local network and uh, Would like to make the most of that because it's a free game and it takes about five minutes to set up so um, we're going to take this from our last tutorial, so I'm going to put links in the uh, on annotations. You will need to have watched some of the previous videos, ideally all of them, but uh, if you're familiar with the game, then you may not actually need to watch the uh, some of those first few. I'm just going to delete the old version. This is the version which we took from a backup and uh, unpacked and then ran in a previous tutorial. So we're just, just going to delete this. Uh, particular uh, move it out of the way at least there that's easier isn't it we're going to open up StarMade which this is the clean installation that we were working with up until now it currently all it has is our blueprints and it has our sector exports ready for import so obviously you could be downloading the sectors you could be downloading the blueprints I've shown you how to get the SMENT file which is a ship file into a ship folder using the ship catalog manager so you've got all the pieces of the puzzle so far all you need to do now is figure out how to actually run the server so the first thing I'm going to be showing you is obviously the admins.txt if I open it up currently it's blank what that means is that everyone is an admin so unless you want everybody to be admin okay when you're running your LAN party you should really put your name in. So I'm using the alias Captain Kirk for these tutorials. So I'm going to put Captain Kirk in as an admin. If I had, um, you know, Bones McCoy, he's my, uh, he's my, he's my uh, doctor. So I'm playing with. This is my friend. I want us both to be admin, but we have another friend who I do not want to be admin. <laughs> okay, so that's that's an example of how you would use the admins.txt. Remember to save it and then exit. The blacklist is used for stopping people from getting in that we don't want to get in. So say, for example, there's somebody that we don't like um, who is in our local network. Because for all I know, you guys are running this on a school network. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so I've got to try and cater for all these different situations. Say you don't want someone playing, okay? Okay, so uh, Dick Dastardly, right? He is a troll and you don't want him on your server, so you put his name in here. You can also use his IP address, and obviously if it was a local IP, it would be something like that, okay? So you'd need to know what his IP was, but you could definitely stop him from getting in until he changes his IP, of course. See, so you're best using a name on for a LAN party. That would work, the IP works better when they're connecting over the internet because they'll have an external address which is like something like what, like, uh, something like that, <laughs> something ir ridiculous. And <coughs> excuse me, something like that, anyway, it's probably more like that, but I don't know. Anyway, the point is. If they're connecting over the internet, then you're better off using an IP address because then it doesn't matter what name they use. If they're coming in over a local network, they could change their internal IP easy, so you want to use the name. That's the only reason I sort of spent some time on that point. So we'll save. Wait, wait, wait. We don't want to be doing silly, silly things here. There we go. Save that. Now, moving down gonna have some more things to change so if we go into server message you can give people a greeting greetings players come to zero 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 for the epic station okay and then anybody that logs in is going to see this message come to zero 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 for the epic station okay brilliant so that's the server message done now settings these are actually game engine stuff you might think, oh, settings.cfg, I know, I'll change. No, don't change anything in here unless you really know what you're doing. Because it is effectively written by the launcher, these settings, and a lot of them aren't, you're not supposed to be able to change them. So I would say leave this one alone. The, 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 the actual, uh, the one you were looking for was server.cfg. Okay. Now, 
we take a look at the server.cfg. We're going to go through all these settings real quick before this video is out. So, uh, protect our starting sector false. I would actually set that to true. This means that people can't get spawn camped in 222 just by joining the game and waiting to load up the, letter, the uh, server. So you can put them at true. No one can get killed by anyone else in 222. Um, a lot of this stuff I just leave on, so I'm going to go straight past it, okay? Or I don't change it, because it's fine, there's no need to change it. Um, this simulation spawn delay, how many seconds between spawn ticks. Simulation trading fills shops, that would be true, okay? So, trading guild will deliver to the shops, so they, when they run out, the trading guild are the people that actually deliver the new stock. So if you, if you like shooting the, sh shooting the shops and killing the trading guild, your shops will be empty soon because they won't come and drop off new goods for you. Just just a little tip. You've got to keep the trade guild sweet slash protect them. Otherwise, you'll end up having to go find another shop, which is fair enough if you want. But if you built your base next to a shop, it's pretty useless. Okay. Um, also, I did miss something out there. You can change enemy spawning to false if you just want to have a build server and you don't want to be hassled by, by pirates. Um, right, sector inactive timeout. What that basically means is after 20 seconds, a sector will start to unload, which is good for memory on the server. Starmade authentication, false. This is much like the Minecraft authentication. Um, if you have it set to false, then anyone can get in with any name. There's no check to see that they actually own the account they're trying to log in with. So doesn't really matter at the moment but I've got a feeling that in about a year's time everyone will be using this because uh, at the moment it's all free accounts but I, I can see a time where people will only want paid users on their server anyway starting credits so you can change this I usually put mine up to 50,000 um, default blueprint enemy use so if I say false here, that means that the uh, pirates can't use my blueprints, or the default blueprints, rather. So, yeah. Uh, lock faction ships. If this is set to false, I have it on true, but if it's set to false, anybody can get in any other ship and edit them or whatever, fly them around. So, it's basically turning off the griefing protection that we have from faction blocks. I've always wanted to check out this physics shape casting tunneling prevention, but I've never had a chance to turn it on and find out. It does actually say that it's not working though, it says bugged right now, so um, I, that's one of the reasons I sort of left it alone. Uh, catalog slots per player, minus one is, is, is infinite, zero is obviously zero, and then you can put a finite number in if you want it to be like 10, 20, 30, whatever. It's good if you have hundreds of players on your server, because obviously you don't have to store thousands of blueprints. Uh, this is how long a day is in milliseconds. Universe day in milliseconds. The catalogue name collision handling, right, that's a good one. It'll actually rename the uh, blueprints if it's the same with a sort of number on the end of it. Um, hang on, where I've lost my place now. There we go. It'll do, it won't, yeah, false. So I've got it false which means it'll put a number on the end of the blueprint if I save the same blueprint twice. Whereas, if you had it to true, it would just say no. You you know, it wouldn't let you do it. You'd have to rename it. So, 300, sec 300 seconds for sector autosave. I leave the physics slowdown at 40 milliseconds. The thrust limit, I actually put that up to 120, but it depends on the performance of your server and the interconnection, internet connection to it as to how that will handle. I usually turn my server max clients down to 20 because um, I don't have, like you say, my internet connection isn't the greatest in the world, unfortunately. It's good, but it's not fiber, so. Uh, there is a super admin, I guess if your server is super popular and you're getting people trying to hack it all the time, you might want to try putting that on, but uh, for the most part I, don't, I, haven't, I haven't been using that. So, uh, physics linear dampening, now 0.09, this is the, the natural slowdown or physics of the universe, so when you stop accelerating it'll sort of drift along, and that, that, that there is, the lower the less it is, the more the quicker it is, so zero, no slowdown. Okay. Um, 
and uh, obviously there's a rotational one as well for the spin of slow down. Um, you could think of that as friction or drag if you wanted. Now, AI destruction loop count multiplier. This is set at 0.9 and 0.9. Now, that's great for giving feedback for the devs, but when I have people coming on my server, I don't want them earning billions and spamming me with giant ships. So I like to load in the ships they want to show me myself with a load command, and then I don't even need to give them any money. So, uh, I actually changed this to 2 and 1, and then I changed the loot count from chests to 3 and 2. Because I wanted to give people a little bit more for finding chests than just killing pirates. Because I figure there are more pirates than there are chests. Okay? Um, and then that makes it a little bit more balanced. Still not amazing, but it, you know, it's, it's a lot better. You only tend, tend to get T1 stuff coming out of uh, drops there on this system. Or with these settings. I do use a whitelist, so all you have to do is say whitelist true. I was trying to type white. white. Use whitelist true. And we'll look at whitelist.txt in a minute. Uh, filter connection messages equals false. Uh, don't display join connect distance. Right. I think that's okay. I did have that on true for a while. Um, but you don't need it. So it's up to you. If you're having a problem and you don't know when people are disconnecting and disconnecting, enable this and you'll be able to see. Uh, auto kick on modified blueprint use. I had that set to true for a while and then it kicked me out using my own blueprint and I realised that sometimes you get false modified blueprint flags. So, um, as in it's not always actually modified. So, um, I decided to change that. Um, I do have it on remove though, just in case it is a modified blueprint. So, I, I don't mind uploading it again if the game thinks it's... Uh, not legit so and I can always make another one as well so it's not a big problem um, if I've skipped past things basically you should just leave them alone that's the general rule so TCP no delay leave it alone ping flush leave it alone um, and debug segment writing yeah yeah leave that alone just leave them alone unless you really know what you're doing leave them alone uh, the recipe block cost. I like to encourage people to use factories on my server, so I actually put the recipe down to 500. The spawning probability seems to have gone up lately, and I haven't really tested to see what the effect is, so I've left leaving that standard. The recipe refund, I think, should actually be 0.25, because I don't like people getting back. I don't like trading, like instant trading. Um, I don't like the idea that you can buy something and then instantly return it. And I know that um, a lot of people complained about that, and that's why it's 0.5. But I would actually go further and say 0.25. If you buy something and you just intend to sell it straight away and take the hit, you're going to take a hit. So that's, that's, that's my opinion on that one. Also, I've put the level amount up to 400,000 so the blueprints only level up every 400,000 blocks produced this will mitigate the uh, max level bug I don't know if it still exists but we had a bit of an issue with breaking recipes uh, earlier on in the series so that's why I put that up quite a lot quite substantially the default spawn sector location I've just left all of that leave it all alone uh, player death credit punishment. It actually says 0.1, even though the message still says you've just lost half your credits. So I was very tempted to just put it back to 0.5. <laughs> um, but I'm going to leave it at 0.1 for now because uh, all it means is that you should lose 10%, I think, in theory. 0.01, I would have thought, is 10%. Yeah, maybe. In any case, it, you lose credits when you die. If you go down here, player death block punishment false. If this is a hardcore server, that'd be true, and you'd lose all of your blocks. Uh, death punishment time. Again, if this is a hardcore server, you could put this up to something ridiculous and make people perma ban for, or not perma ban, but you could, you know, you could stop people from being able to get straight back in again. They'd have to like wait until they can play a game. Um, projectiles additive velocity. I've been waiting for this one to become a little bit more robust. I did do a bit bit of testing with it. 
but it seemed a little bit strange and now this multiplicator is in I'm going to be doing videos on that but for the purposes of this tutorial it adds velocity to missiles AMC's or, or it should slash will do in the future um, and that will increase the power uh, of the projectile as far as I'm aware so if it goes faster it should hit harder in theory um, and like I say I'll be visiting that again you should just leave it at false if you don't know what it is put it on true if you want to check it out what you need to do is fly to full speed and fire a missile if you overtake your missile it's not set to true this is something which people have been saying about and I think that now this has been put in it's going to look more realistic uh, the problem was that all missiles only did 50 uh, kph, whereas you could set your server to 120, 400, however one. And of course, as soon as you fire your missiles, you'd overtake them, <laughs> uh, which meant that anybody could dodge all missiles <laughs> if the speed limit was over 50. So this gives um, gives rockets a bit of a buff, in a way, to flight speed. So. That's, that's all the server settings. Uh, the last thing, of course, is... Um, I'm going to save it, yes. So the last thing is uh, the whitelist.txt. Now, whitelisting is a bit funny. In the wiki, it says you'd whitelist someone like this. Okay. So that should whitelist. But I've noticed when I do the command, it writes it like this. Okay, if I spell it right, of course. So, I need to find out which one is the correct handling, because if I go into my server, often it doesn't accept the whitelist. And another, I'm just going to give you some guide tips, actually. The command is actually whitelist underscore name space and then player name. That's it enter and then their name will be in the whitelist you just got to be careful that their name is not player name player name you know <laughs> any combination of capitalization that isn't what he's using will not work you have to if it's all lowercase it's got to be lowercase if he's got a capital p it's got to be a capital p Okay, these three guys are different players than, than this guy. <laughs> okay, so even though same name, different capitalization, different player. I don't know if you've ever tried to log into your server with a capital letter at the beginning of your username, if you don't normally have one. If you do, use a lowercase, you'll end up with a completely fresh character. That's just the way the game handles the name. So, uh, just those are the, the sort of points. So if you have a problem with the whitelist not working, do it from in-game, make sure you match the match the capitalization of his name exactly, and then it will work. Okay? So that's your whitelist. Don't save. Um, and that pretty much concludes this. This has been the longest guide of all of them, because I've just been through the entire server, uh, sorry, the entire settings. I'm getting them confused now. The entire server.cfg. Um, I'll be doing more tutorials on Star Made moving forward, so if you're interested, please do uh, subscribe and follow, and you will see that we're doing more of them. I'll be announcing them soon, and uh, thanks for watching. <laughs>